I was reading a post about my previous video, Warm Analog Vibes. I think it was on NPC forums, and the poster mentioned that they'd hoped the video was going to be about making a vibraphone patch. And I thought, that's actually a great idea. OpX4 is really fantastic at creating pitched percussion patches. Hi, my name is Joe. Welcome, and thanks for hanging out with me today. Now, I don't do a ton of physical instrument modeling with synthesizers these days. I mean, for one, it's 2023, and there's probably an ultra-detailed sampled instrument with multiple velocity layers and articulations available for just about any instrument. But back when I was playing live shows, I used to model instruments a lot more often, and I still think there's a lot of value in doing that today. You can learn a lot about synthesis by modeling real instruments, and it can help you learn the ins and outs of a particular synth really well. If you do enough of it, you can really start to get a feel for the synth so that you can turn those knobs more purposefully rather than twisting and hoping that something nice pops out. A physical instrument model also makes a good departure point for creating something more surreal. So let's get into it and walk through modeling this particular idiophone, the vibraphone. I'll show you how I made this patch and what led me to these choices. Okay, so we're going to start off with the fully initialized patch, which is just the factory init patch, but with all of the modulation slots turned off. So the other thing I like to do when I'm modeling a physical instrument, and it's folly not to, is to have you know a reference for that physical instrument set up. So if you want to take a look, I've got just a key group set up over here, and we've got a sample loaded in here, and this is just a sample that I grabbed off of um, Splice of a vibraphone. So really nice to be able to hear that. Um, you know, no matter no matter how good your ears are, you might be able to you know pick out a vibraphone if you heard one, or maybe you can pick out a guitar, or maybe you've got such golden ears that you could say that's a, a Stratocaster being played through a tube screamer on the neck pickup into a Fender Deluxe amp. Um, but when you're trying to model a sound, uh, that that really changes the equation. You can get really lost, and you can think you're doing really great, um, and then when you go back and listen to it. Uh, it just doesn't turn out as good. It doesn't sound quite like you thought it did when you were modeling it. It's just easy to get lost in it. So if you're trying to model something that's a physical instrument, I would recommend always having a reference nearby. Okay, let's get into this. So the first thing that I want to do is take a look at the envelope for this. And with a vibraphone, um, it's an instrument that you pluck with a, a mallet, a rubber mallet, and it's got these large metal tines. So it's got kind of an initial attack sound, and then it's got a big body sound um, that decays over a long period of time. Um, I think they can actually, some of the lower keys can actually last maybe even up to a minute. Um, so just a really long decay on those. Uh, and it's got a sustain pedal, so when that sustain pedal is not engaged, then the note rings out. But when you um, let off of the sustain pedal, uh, the piece of felt uh, on a bar closes in toward those tines, and that makes the sound decay really rapidly. Now, I don't necessarily want to have to play this with a sustain pedal, so let's try to set up the envelope so that we can play it without using one. Let's take a look at envelope one. So I've just got a sine wave sound here. And I don't think I need um, two decay stages for this, and when I only need one, I just like to use decay number two. So let's turn decay level one up to 100%, but turn its time all the way down. And like I said, these can ring out for a really long time. So let's bring decay to all the way up to 10 seconds, which I think will be long enough. And then we'll turn the sustain all the way down. And let's turn the release up uh, just a little bit, maybe to like a half a second or so. Um, and this is the part, like this will play, as long as you're holding down a note, this will play the attack and both of the decays and it will hold the sustain. And then when you release the key, it will go into the release phase for what we've got set to a half a second here. And that actually, that release will apply no matter when you release the note, whether you know it's in the decay phase or whatever. So now if I hold down a note and I let off, it decays for about a half a second. But if I hold that note down, it decays over a lot longer period of time. And I think the only other thing I want to do here maybe is just um, adjust this decay curve a little bit um, so that it's got a little bit of a, a steeper fall off at first and then kind of evens out. So we're going to put that at about 25%. And I think that sounds pretty good for going in place for an envelope. So the next thing I want to do is work on kind of the body of the sound, not, not the attack part with the mallet, but what happens after that as the note starts to decay. Um, and it obviously is a lot brighter than this. So let's take a listen to our reference sample and see what we can figure out. And 
what I'm hearing there is something that is still a very pure tone, but it definitely has a, like a really high harmonic up in it. But I think, like I say, it still sounds very pure. I don't think that like a, a traditional waveform is really going to apply here. And just as a check, let's go over and play some basic waveforms using Mini D. So here we've got a ramp waveform, and that's definitely too bright and buzzy. And so is a half saw. And we've got this fat triangle. I think that's still a little too buzzy. And that triangle's starting to get pretty close, but I, I even think that maybe has just a little bit too much buzz and uh, harmonic content in it. So instead of doing this with like a waveform shape, let's try to approach this by just adding another fundamental tone into this. So let's go over to envelope number two, and we'll set this up exactly the same as envelope number one. So we'll turn the decay one time all the way down, the decay level for level decay one up all the way to 100%, decay two to 10 milliseconds. We'll set the curve at 25. Sustain all the way down and release at about 500 milliseconds. And now we should be able to, after we turn it up, hear that operator for operator two. So let's go into the submix and let's just turn operator two all the way up. So now it sounds just like before, but maybe a little bit louder. And let's come back and actually try to dial in operator two and see if we can find that overtone. I'm gonna to listen to the reference sample one more time real quick here. And for operator two, let's start adjusting that ratio. I think that sounds just about right. There's my reference. And there's my patch. So that's sounding really good. That sounds very close to me, and I think that's going to work great. So next, let's work on that attack part of the sound, the part of the sound where the mallet, rubber mallet, strikes that metal tine. And let's listen to that in the reference sample. So it's really noisy. There's a lot of harmonics there, and I think that's going to be a great candidate for FM. And it's really short, too. It doesn't last for very long at all. So let's go in and dial in envelope three to represent that mallet striking the metal tine. So we'll come to envelope three, and we're just going to make this really short. So for this one, again, I will take uh, the decay one time all the way down. We're just going to use decay two. So we'll turn decay one all the way up. And let's make this decay time two really short. Let's try maybe something like a third of a second. We'll do 315 milliseconds. And we'll turn the sustain and release all the way off for this one. So this is just going to be a, a super short, plucky envelope. And now that we've done that, let's come back to our operator tab and go into the FM routing matrix. And I want to adjust the um, FM amount of operator three, and I think I want to try it against operator one. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment and start turning up the FM amount or the FM index of operator three to operator one. And that's starting to sound in the ballpark. I can really hear that um, little pluck at the beginning of it, but I think we need to, I hear a lot higher harmonics in there. So I think we need to start adjusting the ratio of operator three. Let's try to do that. So we're starting at one. Compare that to the reference. Yeah, I'm liking that quite a bit. I think that's really starting to sound a lot like a vibraphone. So let's start to put in some of those special touches. The first one is that the vibraphone has um, these rotating discs on it, 
that uh, cover the resonating pipes below it, and these rotating discs essentially cause a volume fluctuation. I think they label it as vibrato on the vibraphone, on the real vibraphones, which it seems like kind of a misnomer to me. If I, I consider a vibrato to be something that is like periodically changing the pitch, just like FM. Um, but I don't really hear any of that in the real vibraphone. What I actually hear is a volume fluctuation. So instead of a vibrato, I'm going to try a tremolo, and we've actually got one of those in the effects. So let's check it out. So I'll come over here to effects one, which is where our sound is being routed into bus one, and let's try this tremolo effect. And I think that's starting out with a pretty good sound. Um, like I said, the vibrato on the real instrument is done with rotating discs, so I think it's going to be more of a sine wave rather than a square wave. So let's switch that from square to sine. And I think it might be a little bit fast. Let's try to bring this down maybe to about 4 hertz. And let's try to bring this depth down quite a bit. I don't hear it being that pronounced in the uh, sample, so maybe let's try that around 25%. Let's compare to the reference. And I think that sounds really good. We could probably bring that depth up maybe just a little bit. Let's try 30-ish. Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, the other thing, let's just throw some reverb on here, um, just a touch. So we'll just come down and pick the standard reverb here, and I think I'm going to bring the time up just a little bit, maybe around three seconds. And this mix will probably need to come down. Yeah, I think I like that. As one last finishing touch, this just sounds just a little bit bright to me. I think we could back off some of the brightness a little bit. So let's try to do that with a uh, parametric EQ in the other global effects slot. So we'll come here and we'll choose the simple one here, just this three band parametric EQ. And we can start by rolling off um, some of the high gain right here. And we could change this high frequency here. Let's try this with some chords. I think that sounds really close and really nice to my ear. I just wanted to take these last few seconds to thank all of you who have been subscribing to my channel, leaving likes, and dropping comments. I really enjoy reading your comments, so feel free to tell me what you thought about this video, if you're so inclined, and what ideas you'd like to see in future shows. That's what we've got for today. This is Joe. I'll catch you next time.